Hey guys, welcome to Data Trek, your one-stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. Today I have Asis Gupta with me. Introducing Asis, Asis has done his studies from Triple IT Bangalore and has experience working in both MNC and a startup. He has worked for companies like Walmart, Microsoft, and he is currently working as a lead ML engineer at SharePoint. Talking about his research site, he has papers in top-tier conferences like KDD and Rexis. and also he is a reviewer for many conferences and on the fun side ashish is also a fitness enthusiast so welcome welcome ashish to the channel hey hi thank you thanks for the introduction yeah uh, so ashish like uh, you have done a lot of work in different domains you have also worked on recommendation engines we will cover all of that but tell us how you got started in data science at the first place so uh while in my btech days uh, there were hardly any uh, courses related to machine learning or something like that but uh, we were like building websites and other project stuff so i was just looking around like what should be my uh, final year project so i just got to see that uh, there is something revolving around machine learning and they they are just building some sentiment classifiers and uh, other type of stuff because that was just uh, starting at that space so i got excited and uh, i thought ki let's read this and uh, get into this area also of uh, computer science or data science domain so from that time i was uh, pretty much excited or curious to know about that subject and after that i did my masters and uh, specialized in data science and finally made my career in data science so that was how i started in data science and uh, like for a beginner if uh, he or she wants to know like how to get there ample number of courses as of now at that time there were just a handful of uh, three to four something courses and you can like choose what is the best for you and you can just go on with some of the course if you find it interesting then you can easily go into machine learning and now machine learning has progressed a lot so you have to like see like which of the areas you want to Uh, go in and what you want to succeed in. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, that's inspiring for the viewers. Uh, and Asis, like, uh, what are the different domains that you have worked upon in these all these companies and type of business problems you have worked upon? If you can just give a brief to the viewers. Yeah. So, uh, it's mostly related to NLP and uh, ranking stuff. So, while I was in Walmart, uh, I was working in catalog. Uh, team so where we have to uh, just assign some labels to the uh, product and descriptions which we had because there are many sellers who just upload their products and say ki these are the some uh, labels with these products and when a customer searches for those products they might fail so we have a team which filters out those things and uh, assigns proper label also we had a sequence labeling task and multiple other since the data is not properly supervised so we had clever ways of how to deal with the data and how to uh, tune it to our algorithm and uh, we also had some generations like uh, if a small amount of data is given then how can we generate uh, to a larger extent and train the model so that was the time uh, like i worked mostly in catalog team after uh, switching from walmart to microsoft i was in ranking defensive domain so wherein we need to uh, stamp the pages which were there pages also as well as the domains which are there in the like uh, ranking website or the bing.com so there are multiple pages like let's say related to hallucinations holocaust and corona virus theories and those pages are like uh, spreading misinformation or disinformation so they are just uh, making uh, a person who is reading those web pages it is uh, he or she is like getting to know that yeah these are things going on but they are not actually in that uh, particular detrimental aspect so we need to remove those or uh, bring the ranking of those pages down to some extent so that they are not visible in the top 10 list after that yeah uh, i moved to share chat where in i was also uh, responsible for ranking so here in what we have we have multiple share chat is much uh, like instagram if you have seen so what we do in instagram we scroll up and down and we some like some post share some post 
comment and do multiple other stuff so uh, while in share chat uh, what i am doing is currently uh, we generate some candidates because like if you go to instagram you just scroll your feeds you get some of the contents which are generated by the algorithm and uh, then uh, after clicking some video you scroll up and yeah, you see multiple other videos which are uh, very similar to that video or very similar to your history so that is the suggestions we are showing to the user so much like that we have share chat also and uh, since share chat is in multiple languages of all over the india so it's uh, pretty much very similar to uh, instagram but instagram is just a global thing so people know that a lot compared to share chat share chat is a uh, indian thing. so these are the types of work we did a lot in my uh, journey they yeah, are very interesting so you started with e-commerce domain then you move to the search domain and now you are in a social networking domain you have seen it all you have done nlp you have done ranking retrieval recommendation system so truly inspiring so uh, since you have worked in all these various ml techniques and also you have some research papers so tell us about your research journey what you published how was it like starting from thinking that this is a public this is a publishable idea to like uh, doing the like writing research and publishing it finally tell us the research journey of it how did the, how did that process work uh, during my college days like in the last semester people either used to do internship or thesis so i opted for thesis uh, just to get to know like how the things work and go deep into a particular topic so i was uh, interning with video can uh, and therein uh, like my mentor was uh, manish sir and uh, i did like at that time uh, my research or the thesis topic was uh, like recommending uh, answers from a particular video so given a whole chunk of video we and that was basically uh, the videos uh, related to educational educational uh, background so for a particular educational video if you see uh, there are approximately one hour or more than that type of lectures from nptel harvard stanford and other uh, sources so if a person needs to know about some topic or if he or she has some question he don't want to go into that whole particular video he just want to type in a question and get some chunk like from where and what like start to end where should be my answer and what should be my answer so that was the uh, main goal of our uh, the- thesis so for that uh, i wrote the uh, like we got some better results and at that time it was pretty new now you can see that is also happening in youtube so uh, we wrote paper and at that time i was not knowing ki uh, these are the conferences and these are better conference and these are not good so it was like uh, manish sir also helped me like uh, to figure out if you are uh, figuring uh, if you are trying to write some paper or do something you should uh, focus on these conferences and these are pretty good so at that time my work was accepted luckily in pdd and uh, after that i thought ki uh, let's continue uh, this aspect also because apart from regular industrial work which we do in the industry we need to have uh, something related to uh, research background so that uh, like uh, if we are going into some conferences or we are going into some companies then we can show that uh, we have some depth of understanding like how the things are working and how we can make progress in that so that was my uh, basic or the full intuition that i had for writing some papers awesome awesome and uh, tell us about the process as well for example someone is someone wants to write a paper about some particular topic where they are getting good results usually what happens in the paper you have to give a lot of references as well of <clears throat> similar work and all so how can one find the most relevant papers related to that work uh, so uh, like if you are working for a paper and uh, for your work only you might have read some of the blogs or some of the related papers and from those related papers you might get that yeah they have uh, worked on this thing and uh, they also have referenced uh, those uh, other papers so you might have gone through a multiple series of papers and uh, these are the things which may work which may not work so it may happen that uh, some techniques work for them but they are not working for you 
and some which didn't work for them they may work for you so it all depends on the data and type of problem which you are trying to solve so you get references from them and you can use directly uh, those in your papers yeah very rightly said like if you are if you want if you're trying a new idea and you if you want to publish it don't do that first build something and finally think to write a research paper but research let the research be throughout in the process so you know which paper has done one what and it doesn't happen that you end up reinventing something you know what are the things that people have already done what works what doesn't work and where you can contribute to some novelty and while writing the paper you can actually give reference to all those things because you have already read those things and you have an idea sure okay uh moving on uh so next uh ashish tell us about recommendation system to the audience that uh some some of the learners they would want in future to work in recommendation system or maybe already they are enthusiastic about this type of recommendation systems let's take a reference of any social media app let's say instagram and uh, how would a recommendation system for instagram like app will work how would you design it so uh, recommendation system so let's say we log into instagram what happens is when we log into instagram there are some candidates which are shown to us candidates as in video as well as images post right these are the posts we either follow those uh, particular content creators we get from those or we go on search option also we get a series of uh, post which we have which we like have seen earlier also and which we have interacted earlier also so what happens is in the candidate generation step you have some user and you have some post you need to see how uh, similar it is uh, like how much uh, they are similar to each other and how different they are to each other so in the basic candidate generation step you can either think of matrix factorization or some other technique to generate some candidates and uh, rank them according to their similarity then you need to go uh, to a ranking phase wherein given a user id post id user metadata as well as post metadata you need to predict the label the label can be if the user has liked the post shared the post favorited the post or done any uh, span of video play so if the user hasn't uh, played the video let's say up to x second then we may get that the user doesn't like that type of videos so you can use multiple other things apart from these metadata you can use history of the user also to generate the content now after all these things there is a personalization layer wherein uh, let's say in terms of e-commerce also so user is saying give me blue shirt blue shirt can be either blue shirt or a denim shirt or somewhat uh, similar to those type of shirt shirt now if the user doesn't like denim shirt why are we showing him in the top 10 recommendation so there comes in the level of personalization so it's like the user doesn't like those things then uh, we need to look at the history as well as uh, how much uh, context we have for the user so it can be the gender the locality so the that is the location geography and other things to personalize and uh, recommend to the user so this is the uh, ranking stack and uh, after that comes the evaluation part so how do you evaluate that the ranking is good do you use auc ndcg and other metrics to decide finally if you go for deployment then there are lot of bunch of uh, tools as well as tasks so deploy via jenkins pipeline and then uh, host it into a do a load test whether that particular model can handle that type of load or not and can that be deployed on the server also because server has also a cost involved in it so you either if the model is too large then you go for compression you use adapters you use mixture of experts so mixture of experts in this case is like uh, we have multiple heads so we have a like head share head as well as other heads we can't use use uh, different models for all these because if you use different models then it will be difficult to maintain and it won't be scalable 
So we use multiple heads and uh, we try to fine tune on these heads and uh, finally combine them via some weightage and predict what is the output. So this is the whole thing uh, which we generally do in our recommendation system. Got it. Got it. Very interesting. So there is a retrieval phase which will retrieve the candidates. There is a personalization phase where we will do the ranking that uh, out of these candidates how to rank. And and then you do personalization as well as diversity thing. Uh, can can you dif- tell us the difference between ranking and personalization? So ranking is like uh, on based of uh, what the user ha- user and post are given. Mm. So just to say whether the user will like that post or mm. interact with that post or not. Mm. One or zero. Mm. Right. Mm. And personalization comes when the user doesn't want to see those items. But it is because your candidates are generated in such way and the user is saying that like your uh, ranking system is saying that uh, these posts are good, these are bad, these are good, these are bad for the user. Mm. But at the end of, uh, at the phase of personalization, you see the user history as well as its uh, uh, other data to decide like uh, these items should be shown on the top. These should be shown at the bottom. So that is personalization as well as we include diversity also because we don't want all the items to be uh, same or all the posts to be of the same manner. So, yeah. So, so is personalization, does it mean that post ranking, we want to remove some of the content or, or uh, boost? Yeah, yeah. we just want to change uh, or shuffle ranking. And why we want to, to it? because user has already seen some stuff or user is no more interested. User has already seen also uh, user might have not interacted with these types of posts and interacted with some other type of posts. So he may like those posts a lot. So it's like that. Got it. Got it. So there is a retrieval phase ranking uh, and then personalization addition of diversity. And once you have done that, you evaluate the model and finally load test and deploy it. Okay. Awesome, awesome. This and uh, how the much retraining continuously is needed in these models. Is there any golden rule that we can use that? There is no golden rule uh, for retraining, but it's like the fast you retrain, and the fast it is feasible uh, for the uh, business also because if you are trying to retrain the model within half an hour or something like that. It will incur a lot of cost and your model also may happen to uh, train very slowly. So it depends like how the model is built and uh, how you are adapting to uh, retrain or you are trying to, uh, so let's say in ranking, there are let's say 100 features, right? And you have uh, four or five features which are super important in those rankings. And you are saying that these four or five features are changing after every certain interval. So you need to retrain the model to encapsulate those four and five features to give more importance to those four and five features within, let's say, one hour, two hour or something like that. So you train, uh, retrain the model after that particular uh, time of interval. So it all depends on the business use case. So got it, there's got no it. Good. Got it. And also one thing that one hack that I have seen uh, people do is instead of retraining, just do the inferencing. Like as you said, in one, two hours, keep doing the inferencing, but don't retrain the model or don't fine tune the model. Yeah, we can do inferencing and, but we can just, uh, it's like a uh, agent. You see, you, the more you explore, the better it can be. It's not a, a golden rule, but if you try to explore and you, if you try to retrain a lot after some time of like some interval, then it may happen that uh, your model is learning new embeddings. Got it. And it's also giving out the better representation as well as better ranking. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, so features are continuously changing. We can do, we can keep doing the inferencing with these change features, but it's it's always good to retrain the model to learn new patterns. Correct. Got Got it. And, uh, with these all LLMs making a lot of noise like chat GPT, Bart, Llama 2 and all those things. Tell us that uh, how much of these uh, LLMs can be used in recommendation system. Like I know many people are using transformer based ranker retrieval, but does the, that knowledge of the LLM, can it be used in recommendation system in some way? 
I'm not sure about like LLMs uh, making a lot of uh, progress in ranking. Um, like I don't know, but LLMs are, are uh, pretty good and pretty awesome uh, product, which are been uh, by product of OpenAI. So OpenAI made Chat GPT, and uh, LLMs like if we see uh, in ranking, I'm not sure. Like uh, uh, have the companies used it or deployed it? But LLMs have made good progress in uh, certain other tasks uh, like uh, uh, classification, sequence labeling, and other stuffs. And I'm pretty sure that LLM uh, can be used in ranking also. Uh, if we consider LLMs only as uh, GPT-3 or Llama, mm. Uh, mm. it's not like that. LLMs are like large language models. So yeah. we can go with uh, transformer based models. So BERT, Roberta, T5. Electra and other uh, models which have come across till now. So uh, related to uh, deployment stuff, I am not pretty sure about LMs being used in ranking. Yeah, but, yeah there are multiple papers uh, available uh, around uh, these uh, models hmm. which have been used in ranking. So, yeah, yeah, correct. So transformer and, and these large language models people are do using people are using for ranking retrieval, but using that knowledge of Llama to chat GPT, it's uh, not sure how much applicable because those are very slow. Also, maybe we can use yeah. it to create a data set and train these models, but using yeah, it, basically, uh, they are used to create data set for uh, ranking as well as uh, multiple other tasks, so classification, hmm. vision, and other things. Even so we know that it. Yeah, GPT-3 was generating text based on some given previous text. So it is a generative model. But GPT-4 was using images plus text to generate text. So mm. it is much, much better enhanced version. So mm. we are seeing that images, uh, sorry, image field is also involved in this. And we are able to not only uh, generate text and uh, solve other tasks, we can use images also uh, to enhance and better our model and generate the data to train a smaller distilled version for adapters also in that particular scenario. Correct. Correct. But real time use case may not be possible, but we can use these tricks to create features or enhance our models in through a batch mode feature. As of now, yeah, I haven't seen that uh, real time use case has been done uh, for uh, this uh, GPT type of models, uh, like let's say GPT four or something or they have been directly deployed on uh, production since they are pretty costly and pretty heavy to make uh, uh, inferencing also for, from these. And we need to fine tune these based on our data. So we are just uh, using uh, their, like we are just generating data from those and uh, training a smaller model and using those. Got it. And uh, Asis, uh, you have worked quite a bit on the engineering side of productionizing these models as well right so uh, can you can you give viewers some insights or some good practices on the engineering side while uh, like good practices to train productionize load test uh, like whatever comes to your mind like i have also not worked a lot in engineering but yeah i know like how the things have worked so like let's say given a huge data so we have in gbs tbs or petabytes of data we just go ahead and create some parquet file or tf record file to train a model and at the end uh we inference now the model is like if we are going ahead with a simple model which is just uh, learning the weights and uh, doing some uh, weighted combination of the features to give out output that model won't be large, but if the model is generating some embeddings or giving out some extra features, then that model becomes large as per time. So if it is trained on larger data, it will be, become larger. Now, it is possible that uh, the model is, might be facing latency issues as well as a uh, model is not scalable to be deployed. So we need to go ahead and load test that model via locust testing. Uh, tools and other stuff. Now, uh, to deploy that model, since that that is a very large model, we can go ahead with distillation, compression, or other techniques using adapters or mixture of experts type models. So there are multiple uh, tools. So uh, like we have DAGs also. 
so what is dag dag is uh, basically uh, a repetitive uh, or a like in graph wherein we are just uh, trying to uh, run it after some schedule or after some interval so that model is uh, like repeatedly built or uh, retrained in that particular manner and then we have jenkins pipeline wherein uh, the model is deployed and finally we launch that on uh, like we push that into some serving wherein that model is served and inferences are uh, taken from that model. So we deploy it on, uh, on a larger server wherein uh, we get multiple inferences and we see like we hit that model with a large amount of users to see what is the latency. And after that, uh, we we do some can testing to see if it can handle like one percent of traffic or something like that if it is able then we scale it uh, we scale the traffic uh, by uh, while doing the ev test uh, to two percent five percent and so on. so that's uh, how the model journey is awesome yeah. awesome so i would like to tell the viewers that what asish just explained actually is very crucial it's the backbone of all the inferences that are happening for all the companies, whether Instagram, Facebook, or any other company, whichever are supporting millions or billions of users, this is how the things are working. This is how every model is productionized, and we are um, we we are getting that very uh, catchy recommendation systems or whatever, whatever be the ML model designed for. This is how the productionization uh, of that ML model actually works. But as is just explained. So Asis, before we wrap it up, just uh, tell us uh, that uh, since the field is dynamically changing, any advice you have for the working professionals to remain updated in the field? So people should read uh, papers and what are the other steps uh, which are going on around their work. So they can just go on log into uh, social media platforms wherein they can see like what are the new stuff which are happening or they are following some of the mentors like from some of the bigger universities or from the uh, industries also to see like what are the new advancements they are doing and if they can leverage those things in their own current industrial work on so that's how uh, like people remain updated and uh, just see like how the big guys are uh, playing in the market completely agree so we should know which are the right platforms to look out for where the good information is published and in as you said in social media linkedin and all follow the right people they do post keep updating you with the latest happening and you also learn in the process uh, so asis any uh, message you have for the data track viewers so uh, as an ml enthusiast uh, like if you are following data track then go ahead and watch the uh, videos from data track because it has ample number of uh, hosts which have given better knowledge and which have said like what happens in the industry. Also, uh, if you are looking to go ahead in ML field, just go ahead uh, with some of the courses which are there currently available online. And uh, you may uh, choose like which one suits you and which one is good for you. Also, uh, deep dive into the maths of the algorithm to understand like how the things work just uh, don't go ahead with the libraries because they won't lead you uh, longer ahead in time so just know the maps also as well as uh, try to solve uh, instead of just reading what the things are going on try to uh, do some hands-on also solve the problems so one of the best platforms for solving the problem currently is Kaggle so they have pretty structured way of solving the problem you get some data you have some metrics on which uh, the particular model which you build will be evaluated on and you get final result by this you will get to know like what are the different types of problem which are there as well as like what are the different techniques which you are building you can go into the discussion forum also and there you get to know like these are the better techniques which you can use in your uh, while building your model also, uh, just uh, uh, in the whole ocean, don't stick to one thing. Uh, just keep on trying multiple other things and see what the things are there which you like doing. And finally, go in depth of those things and uh, gradually uh, proceed in your career. So also, uh, if you are in the industry, just uh, try to be updated with all the papers and keep following uh, the people which are uh, 
they are which are doing that type of work also and uh, keep reading all those things to be updated in that particular field. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Asis. Yeah. And in Data Track channel, we keep making videos on the most industry uh, related problems. So you can find a lot of industry problems. They are interesting projects and so on. And also, I would like to tell everyone that one of my most watched videos, which is uh, ongoing interview trends in data science, that video, I got some very crucial and uh, interesting insights from Ashis. And uh, actually, both of us switched company in a similar time. So whatever our learning was from the interview experiences and talking with other people, we tried to put it it in that video and that video came out really good. So thanks, Asis, for your input or insights in that video as well. And uh, thanks for your time. It's really helpful for the audience and they would have learned a lot about a lot of topics. Thanks, Abhishek. Bye. Bye.